So I shot this video a little over a month ago, but I couldn't get myself to publish it because I didn't feel like I had all of the information I needed yet. I honestly just felt like I hadn't put enough rounds through the gun yet. And the last thing that I wanted to do was put out bad information. Since then, I've put probably another six to 800 rounds through this gun just to make sure everything was working the way that I wanted it to. And I've definitely learned a couple things that I wanted to share. Also, if you notice any kind of weird jumps in the video, it's because I cut out where I was previously talking about reliability issues that have since been resolved. I'll be sure to expand on those as I go, but here's a couple things I'll explain up front. The first thing you may notice in the video is that I was running the Hive Metal Mag Catch, which I've switched back to OEM because I had a major issue with them that was detrimental to the reliability of this build. Just trust me when I say, if you're running polymer mags, do not use any kind of metal mag catch. Only run polymer. Hive's Metal Mag Catch destroyed my mags. After about 150 rounds, I started to run into the issue of my mags just falling out randomly without depressing the mag catch. This was due to the polymer mag catch lip being slowly eroded because the metal is just too rough on polymer. So I had to go and buy all new mags and I switched back to the OEM catch and have not experienced a single mag issue since. The second thing which I'm super stoked on is Black Arch reached out to me and sent over their brand new X300 G19 Entrada to test out and it's quickly become my go-to appendix carry option over my tier one Access Elite. A couple quick things I love about the Entrada over the Access is the webbing over a bungee cord, the way the gun snaps into place, the metal clips, the way the screws tighten down because you don't have to bend in the annoying washers to get it tight enough, and I even like Black Arch's mod wing a little bit more. A couple things I wish Black Arch would add are an optional sweat guard on the mag holder, and then maybe to not make the body reversible because I only want the sweat guard on the one side. And I definitely want to see a better mag retaining method. I really love the way that tier one's mags retain. They click into place with the detent the same way your gun retains the mag. This is one thing that really has bugged me about Black Arch holsters in the past. Their mag retention is definitely not as good as tier one's, but it's one of those things where I'm fine living without the click for now. Cause it's not like theirs is bad. It just doesn't click into place, which is what I prefer. From my experience so far, Black Arch makes a very competitive option when it comes to appendix carry. They are less expensive and I've been running them for the last couple years before they even started having me test them out and they've only gotten better. So definitely check them out. Check out their new X300U compatible Entrada. This is one that I had actually been asking them for and waiting on. I personally believe that tier one still leads the industry in many ways and I definitely think their holsters are worth the money. But again, Black Arch is a great option and I think they are the next runner up in concealment holsters. But other than that, enjoy the rest of the build. I have owned and built out quite a few Glocks, but I think this one is actually one of my favorites so far. I really wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do because when I first saw the 19, I thought it looked stubby and disproportionate, which honestly, I still think it kind of does, but a lot of the stuff that I added helps to mitigate kind of that issue that I had with this gun originally. After finishing the build and shooting it a ton, I am really happy with the way it's turned out and how it performs. As always, the build list is below and everything is linked on my website gunmanusa.com under the Glock 19 build. Also, it would be amazing if you can help me out and subscribe. If this is your first time on the channel, I have a ton of high quality content for you to enjoy and I need more subs so I can make more videos. So jumping right into the build, starting on the slide, we have the Trijicon RMR Type 2 with the 3.25 MOA dot. So far, it's everything I would expect from a Trijicon. The dot is super clear and the sight picture is solid. I had Culper Precision do the slide cut and Cerakote and they did an absolutely phenomenal job. They're just a local business in Utah. Make sure to link their Instagram below so you can check them out. They honestly do some of the best cuts and Cerakote in Utah. So I was really happy with the way it turned out. I was talking to them about whether or not I would need a riser. They explained to me that it would be more accurate over a certain distance if I left it as a direct mount and I wasn't really used to it at first because it felt pretty low to me especially with the suppressor height sights but 
but I'm definitely getting used to it now and I can see what they were talking about. So I think I can recommend both a riser or a direct mount. I think they're both good. The sights here are my favorite from XS Sights, the DXT2 Big Dot Suppressor High Irons. And I did a lower co-witness with my RMR dot. These are definitely my favorite for a couple reasons. I've talked about them before, but the build quality, the style, and the materials used, they glow at the perfect brightness. They're honestly just a solid option in my opinion. But they're really not for everybody. I prefer them, but it's just my opinion. The threaded barrels from Silencer Co., which I've also talked about before. I've been running one on my 43X for a while now, and I've loved it. This one is no different. Great quality. Absolutely no issues so far. The can I have on here is the Omega 9K from Silencer Co. as well. I absolutely love this suppressor. One of the best 9mm cans on the market, in my opinion. I can easily shoot without ears, without experiencing any kind of discomfort, though I recommend always shooting with plugs because you don't want to damage your hearing. I do love this suppressor though, it's incredible. So if you're considering a 9 mil can, I would highly consider this one. The light is the X300 UB and it's the same one I run on my Glock 45. I went with the X300 because they are amazing quality and I also already have a bunch of compatible holsters, which made training and carrying really easy so I didn't have to buy and wait for new holsters to come in. I also just love this light, so I'm glad I have another one. The trigger system is the combat option from Johnny Glocks, which if you know me, you know how much of a fan I am of his trigger kits. Besides the trigger shoe, which he makes himself, Johnny takes OEM Glock parts and refines them so they're better. You don't have to worry about reliability or safety because Johnny is one of the biggest safety advocates I know of, and he literally inspects and has hands on each of his products he sells, so the quality control is one of the best out there in my opinion. I don't really know how you can get much better than the owner touching every product. I personally really don't like messing with any of the OEM internals if I can, especially on Gen 5s. Everything is really good, so I tend to leave it alone except for what comes in Johnny Glock's trigger system, which honestly doesn't bother me at all because they're all OEM. The Magwell is from SLR. It's one of my favorite Magwells out there for full-sized Glocks. I really wish they would make one for the 43X MOS, but SLR makes some of my favorite products for both ARs and handguns. Their quality and style is amazing in my opinion, and I've been a huge fan of everything I've used from them. Great quality, great designs. They are just a really solid company. And of course for the gripping, I have my signature Talon grip and goon tape combo. I've talked about these before in my other Glock videos and both are great. I love the Talon grips, they do really well, and the goon tape is is just for a little extra sweat absorption. For me, it just gives a little extra grip, especially when my hands get sweaty when I'm shooting. The mag extensions I have are from Strike Industries. They are super inexpensive and so far have performed really well unsuppressed. My final thoughts with this build are I'm a huge fan of this build as both a conceal carry and a training side carry option. Though I still do prefer my Glock 45 as a combat option overall, I've just experienced absolutely zero complications with that gun, shooting both suppressed and unsuppressed, so to me the most reliable handgun I own is the one that I would take into a combat situation. Between my 43X MOS and this, I still prefer to conceal my 43X because clearly there's a big size difference, so there's much less printing with my 43X. If I'm going to conceal this, I definitely need to wear like a sweatshirt or something, so I would consider it to be more of like a winter option. What's cool to me is it feels just as comfortable as my 43X, but that could just be because I'm so used to appendix style carrying. I am very happy with the way that this build has turned out, and I'm especially happy with how smooth and good it feels to shoot, which has a lot to do with Johnny Glock's trigger system, the suppressor, and not to mention it looks really good. I do want to head over to the range so we can see how it shoots and a little bit of BTS training. If you don't want to stick around for that, no big deal. I hope you enjoyed the build, and I'll see you in the next one. We're out here on the range. Uh, we perfect. We need to do a little audio sync really quick. Good. We have my buddy here, Austin, who is a complete beginner. We're going to run through a series of handguns, a little bit of rifle, to essentially show what a beginner can do from beginning to end in the training process. So Austin has really almost zero experience with firearms in general. Two times I've shot a gun. Two times he's shot a gun. So we're gonna walk him through basically beginning to end and show you guys uh, the difference in his shooting patterns 
where he starts and where he ends after training. I the did. noob. <laughs> he won't be a noob at the end of this. And then we have my brother Josh here who is active law enforcement and also a trainer. And uh, he's been doing training for a couple years now and he's been shooting guns for a very long time. So he's very accurate, great shooter. And he's gonna be doing most of the training. So Austin, we finished up the training portion of the day. We want to give you 17 rounds. Um, no pressure, <sighs> you no know, pressure? but okay. we want to we want to you see say where that. you're at. Okay. And then we're going to compare targets here. We'll see where you started and where you're finishing here, okay? okay. So we got the Glock 19 Gen 5 here, 17 rounds. Uh, the, it's uh, the normal Glock 19 holds 15. It's a 17 mag, okay? I get an extra two. You get an extra two. All right, so everything you learn, start it with your stance, and there you go. Slower down just a little bit. You're good. Just breathe through it. I gotta hold that trigger. Don't focus on the trigger as much. Oh, okay. Focus more on that red dot and where that red dot is. Is that 17? Yep, it was. Holy now crap. 17. I love it, bro. Let's take a look at what happened here. <clears throat> Lots of sevens. No, you're fine. So this is great. This is information here. This is what you're gonna use to put these, this group here. Uh, what's happening is you're pulling down left, which generally means uh, on your cadence, as soon as you're grabbing the trigger, you're pulling. Yeah, so that, this is what polling looks like. This is okay to happen because we can correct it. Where we put our finger yeah. on the trigger is also that going to determine it. where this yep. goes. So I could tell that. There she is. <sighs> yeah, let's check out our group. That was great, bro. Let's check it out here. So it looks like, uh, for the most part, we completely corrected your group here. We had one, two off, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, and uh, the rest are in. Either you double hit, so all the, all of yours are on black now. Yeah, besides one, two. So you, right you fixed the problem with the trigger pull. Right. Yeah. Is that a little flyer? No. Oh yeah, three. Okay, no, no, that was before. I marked that one. Oh. Yep, yep, that was my bad. Uh, all on black minus two. It's Bro. Like four right here. Yeah. Look at look at those. You're there, bro. There it Let's is. Go. Yeah. That's no, it's incredible. You're shooting incredibly. All right. Yeah. Wow. So great job, Austin, dude. Amazing. Yeah, great, great work. So this is what it comes down to. Understanding the basics, uh, reading reading where you're hitting and uh, correcting from there, knowing how to correct, right. and then uh, reapplying the fundamentals over and over until you're hitting consistently where you want to. And uh, that comes down to training often and training with people who know the fundamentals and basics. You cannot get this. Uh, on your own, it's really difficult to, you can, but uh, we encourage you to seek training and uh, have become, a professional. Yeah, yeah, have a professional. Josh. Become proficient at this. This is what saved lives. Right. Um, I want to go through all the different guns that we have here today.
So I guess the last thing that we want to say to you guys is uh, train hard. You are your own best defense as long as you know what you're doing with these things. Uh, they are designed to effectively protect people and uh, you have to be proficient in knowing how to use them in order to do so, so we encourage that. Austin, you did an incredible job today. Thank you, yeah. man. I, I hope you feel uh, more confident around firearms. Know that this is a not just a one-time thing. You should be coming often if you're gonna jump into the firearms world. I gotta get my first gun now. You gotta get your first gun Let's now, go. and then you gotta train. So you should buy your first gun and a lot of ammo Got so it. we can come out to the range and train hard. Yes. Um, that's all we have. And then I can master today. my own gun. Exactly. Let's go. Exactly. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Okay, man. Appreciate you yeah, coming out today. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. You're the best. You're the best. All right. And if you're interested in seeing the full training video, I'm going to put the full thing on my Patreon. It's about an hour and four minutes long. And that's because I want to fill my Patreon with good stuff for you guys to enjoy if you choose to support me in that way. One more thing for you guys, after news of the tragic events happening throughout the world, I just want you to understand a little bit about how I feel about it. The reason why I train all the time and I carry a gun is so I can defend innocent life. That really is one of the most important things to me and that's why I do it. And it's the reason why I feel so committed to becoming as proficient as possible with the guns that I carry. These new builds are really fun to do, but overall my mission is to become as proficient as possible so I can protect innocent life if that's what it came down to. I hope we can be unified in that mission. I just want you to remember what you train for and why you do it. It's not just for fun. You should be training hard and you should be training so you can be successful in a crappy situation. So please, please go to the range, train very hard, train with other people in your community and get each other on board so we can all protect the things that matter to us. That's all I have for you today. See you in the next one.